Hey everyone, this is Ellie Cakes, and today we're going to read The Little Polar Bear, Lars and the Husky Pup. Should we start reading it? There's Lars there. And what's that? That's a husky pup, I think. Lots of little mini icebergs there. There he is. He's so cute. Oh, look at that. Here we go. Are you all ready? Here we go. Lars, the little polar bear, lived at the North Pole, where there are no trees or flowers, just ice and snow. Lars didn't mind. He loved to go for long walks across the ice, always wondering what he might find behind the next snow hill. One day, Lars walked even farther than usual, and he was very hungry. He lifted his nose and sniffed. <laughs> there was a delicious smell in the air, but he didn't know what it was. Ooh, there he is sniffing. I wonder what it is. Someone's cooking. The delicious smell came from an igloo. <clears throat> that meant there were people. Lars father had warned him to stay away from people. They're dangerous, he always said. But the smell from the igloo was so tempting that Lars couldn't resist. He crawled closer, keeping well away from a team of sled dogs, who seemed to be fast asleep. Suddenly there was a growl. Rrr. The huskies jumped up and strained at their leashes. The leashes snapped and the whole team rushed at Lars, barking furiously. Oh my goodness, look at that! Rrr. That looks really scary. He's running away. <coughs> Lars was lucky he had a head start. When the dogs saw that they would never catch up with him, they lost interest and turned back. At last, Lars could stop and catch his breath. He crawled into an ice cave and went to sleep. He was woken by a strange noise. It sounded like a whimper, but Lars couldn't see where it came from. He walked over to a deep crack in the ice and peered down. There sat a sad little husky. Although the other dogs had given him a fright, he felt sorry for this little one. Don't be frightened, said Lars. I'll help you. Lars climbed carefully down into the crack. He showed the little dog how to jump up from ledge to ledge, and at the top, Lars heaved him out onto the snow. The husky puppy snarled at him. Hey, I just helped you said Lars indignantly. The puppy barked. <laughs> He's so cute. <coughs> How ungrateful, thought Lars. He turned away in disgust and bounded off towards the sea. The little dog ran after him. Lars ran across the chunks of ice until he had left the puppy far behind. There he is there running. The puppy sat down on a drifting piece of ice and howled pitifully. Oh! I would gladly help, Lars shouted to the puppy, but I don't want to be growled at. The little dog looking, looked embarrassed. I won't growl, he said. I promise. Please don't leave me. Oh, I think he needs a new friend. There he is. Oh, look. So Lars towed the puppy back to shore. What's your name? He asked him. Mine's Lars. I'm Flo. Will you take me back to the igloo? I want my mother and I'm hungry. I'll take you home tomorrow if it stops snowing, said Lars. We can wait out the storm here. Then Lars caught some fish and offered one to Flo, who gobbled it up. That wasn't as good as meat, Flo complained. You'll have to meet again soon, said Lars. He shoveled snow into a pile and they lay down to sleep behind it, sheltered from the icy wind. Oh, look at this. The next morning, Lars and Flo set off under a clear blue sky to find the igloo. But when they got there, the dogs had gone and snow had covered their tracks. I want my mummy, wailed Flo. Then he began to howl louder than ever. This time, Lars understood why. He tried to comfort the little dog. We'll find her, he said. Tell me which way you were heading. To the town by the sea, where lots of people live. Oh yes, I know it, said Lars. Let's go. Look at them, they just tap, tap, tap all the way off. And there's the igloo. And they're going to go and find his mummy. Oh dear, that's not good. 
The little polar bear and the puppy walked on and on. They didn't stop even when darkness fell, so they didn't see the hunters until it was almost too late. They had to duck down quickly behind some rocks. The hunters came closer and closer. Suddenly Flo began to growl. Shh, hissed Lars, you'll give us away. But the impetuous puppy jumped up and started barking. Ugh, it's just a stray dog, said one of the hunters, laughing. Then he and his friends got back onto their snowmobiles and drove away. Phew, you did the right thing after all, said Lars. But I don't think we should go any further tonight. We'll find your mother tomorrow, Flo. Oh, look. In the morning, they walked to the sea. A pair of seals were basking on the shore. Flo charged at them, barking excitedly. Stop, Flo, leave them alone, shouted Lars, as the seals fled into the water. Suddenly, Flo stopped barking. Lars, look at this, he yapped. He had found an old kayak. Kayaks belong to people, said Lars, looking anxious, and people are dangerous. He sniffed the kayak all over. <laughs> then he said, it's all right. Nobody's used this kayak for a long time. What a good find. Now we can travel twice as fast. There are the seals. They look nice, don't they? And there's the kayak. Let's turn the page. Paddling a kayak isn't as easy as it looks, said Lars, as they wobbled across the water. Never mind, said Flo, I think we're nearly there. Tonight we'll have meat for supper, hooray! Listen, said Lars sternly, you're not gonna run off after meat. You must stay close to me. In the twilight, as the kayak slipped silently towards the town, they both began to feel nervous. Don't make a sound, Flo, whispered Lars. And for once, Flo kept his mouth tight shut. There's the town. But the moment they stepped ashore, Flo cried, I smell food, yum, yum, yum. And before Lars could stop him, he was gone. What was Lars to do? As he stood wondering, he heard a shout, stop thief. And Flo ran past him with a funny chain hanging from his mouth. Lars ran after him. When they were at a safe distance from the town, Flo stopped and laid the funny chain at Lars' feet. That smells good, said Lars. Just wait till you taste it, said Flo. It's not like fish at all. But the more Flo ate, the sadder he seemed to be. <sighs> Will I ever find my mother, he said mournfully. Then he lifted his little head and gave a desperate howl. Oh! There he goes again, thought Lars. What could he do to keep the reckless little creature quiet? Then Lars heard loud, excited barks. There was no time to run away. Suddenly he was surrounded by dogs, but they didn't hurt him. One of them was Flo's mother. She had heard her puppy howling and rushed to find him. Flo told his mother how Lars had found him and brought him to the town. Thank you, Lars, she said. Now you must let us take you home. The two friends hopped onto the dog sled and were whisked away. This is more fun than kayaking, said Lars happily. That does look like fun, doesn't it? Lars' parents were amazed to see Lars jump off a dog sled and even more amazed by the funny chain that Flo had laid at their feet. Here's something that tastes much better than fish, he told them. Then he turned to Lars and said, I want you to have my collar. It will help you remember me. The dog team barked a farewell and sped away. As Flo's shed disappeared over the horizon, Lars put down the collar, raised his head and howled. Oh, how strange it sounded and how sad, thought his parents. After that, Lars was often seen with a smile on his face and a bright red collar around his neck. Look at that. And that is the end of our story and it was the little polar bear and the husky pup. Take care, bye!